Hi guys, it's Bills here from Slidenerd. Our material design app so far is pretty useless because it has no data inside. We need to fetch data from an external API but the data comes in JSON format. Before this video, I have never talked about JSON anywhere. Hence in this video, I'm going to talk about what is JSON. If you're familiar, you can skip this video. If you're a beginner, just stick around and have fun. I'd also like to thank Jeff Fox and Adnan Sohail for contributing this presentation. If you have any presentations that you can submit, you're welcome to send it to me at slidenote.gmail.com. So let's get started. First question, what is JSON? JSON is a data exchange format, very similar to XML but very different. So if you see, JSON is basically a text format that is completely language independent. In other words, you can have a server in PHP and your Android app can communicate with the server with the help of JSON data. It's not complex, it's not a document format, and it's definitely not a programming language. So what is JSON then? JSON is simply easy to understand, manipulate, generate, it almost replaces XML everywhere. And JSON is preferable because XML has tags, JSON doesn't need tags, it's pretty simple. And you will see how JSON actually looks like in a few moments. And of course, to parse XML, you need to have XPath, which is an overhead remote in JSON because JSON is native to JavaScript. XML uses tags to describe user data and tags increase the size of the data which is one of the most important reasons why we need a language or a format which doesn't use tags and that's exactly what JSON is. Next question, what is the syntax of JSON? How we can write it? How does it look? JSON has two major things, one an object, two an array. Now if you are familiar with object oriented programming of any form, you know very well what these two things mean. So let's take a look further at how you write an object in JSON. Begin with a left brace, end with a right brace and have property values. In other words, there's a name and then there's a colon and then there's a value for that. That's exactly how you separate them. And you separate multiple properties by a comma. Enough with the explanation. Let's take a look at how this actually looks. So you can have a bracket opening, a bracket closing, there's name, there's colon, there's value, and there's comma, again name, colon, value, comma, name, colon, value. That's how you write multiple properties to construct an object. Let's take a look at an example. So here you go. There's your employee ID, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, comma. There's again property, which is name, value, Jeff Fox, separated by a colon here. Again, this comma, and it repeats itself the same way. Now, let's take a look at the second structure, which is array. An array, as you know, is a collection of values. It begins with a square bracket, ends with a square bracket, and it is separated by a comma. In other words, the values are separated by commas within the array. Let's take a look at how this looks. There you go. There's a square bracket opening. There's a value inside. Put comma, put another value, put comma, and you can repeat this for any number of values you want. And at the end, put your right square bracket. Let's take a look at an example. Here, you see this random nums property. Its value is an array. The square bracket opens 24, 65, 12, 94, and it closes. So this is how you write a simple array. Now let's take a look at some of the data types that you can put in JSON. First one is string. You're all familiar with this. It's basically a sequence of zero or more Unicode characters. You put them in double quotes, just the way you do in other programming languages, and you use the backslash to add special characters like new line or single quote or the double quote itself. You can also have numbers inside your JSON file which can be integers or they can be floating point numbers or they can have a scientific notation. But you cannot have octal or hexadecimal values. You cannot have nan or infinity use null instead when you're not sure of the value. And there are booleans as well that support true and false value. A null specifies nothing or it simply means it has no value. Let's take an example of that as well. So here if you see there is a student's array, the bracket begins here to indicate that it is an array and that's how you make it out. Then you can see that there is one huge value separated by a comma and another huge value. Now this first huge value is basically an object and that can be identified by the left curly brace and the right curly brace. It has property and value. So the property is id, value is 1, property is name, value is bibs and both are separated by a comma as you can see here. And one here is an integer inside a JSON file. You can have booleans like this and you can have null like this as well. Now let's compare JSON and XML. As you saw, JSON is a plain text format just like XML. It is human readable which you could easily do and it is hierarchical which means you can have several lists of objects or values within one another. And I'll of course show you that with a real JSON feed and show you how to read it. Difference between JSON and XML 
JSON is lighter and faster than XML, as you saw why. JSON uses typed objects, as you saw there were data types for integers, floating numbers, booleans and null. But in XML, everything is considered to be a string and you must convert it to the appropriate type inside your app or program. And of course, JSON has less syntax. The properties are accessible immediately to your JavaScript code if you're writing JSON code in JavaScript. We talk about the limitations of JSON. There are no namespaces in JSON and there is no inherent validation. If you remember, XML has a DTD where you can specify how your documents will be structured. But in JSON, there is nothing other than JSON end. Let's take a look at how and when we can use JSON. First point is obvious, we use data transfer between the server and our app. Second point where we have said that we can perform asynchronous calls to the data without requiring a page refresh comes into effect when we talk about the sync adapter in Android where we update our local SQLite and remote MySQL database simultaneously using JSON. And the third part is about data stores where we can save data and load data. And of course, we can store and load data locally in our local storage. So where is JSON used? I'm sure you have tried using one of these APIs sometime in your app development. And I'm sure you have come across JSON response. And I'll be taking one of them right now in this video to explain what a JSON feed actually looks like and how you can read it. And before that, let's take a look at the Android APIs for JSON. They are in the org.json.star package, which is the default JSON package available. Other than that, there are certain libraries like JSON or Jackson that you can use in your apps to process the JSON response and generate JSON data. Now there's JSON object and there's JSON array, the two primary classes that represent the two types or structures that we talked about earlier in this video. And of course you can use the two string method on one of these objects to get a string representation of JSON file. Now let's take a look at how a JSON feed actually looks like and how we can read it. Now let's take a look at what a real JSON feed looks like and how we can read it in the human readable format by taking a look at the Facebook graph API. So here I have simply queried the me endpoint and if you see this is what it returns me in the JSON response. How do you read this? As you see this is a curly bracket, it opens, it closes, it means it is an object. And as soon as you talk about an object in JSON, the first thing that comes to your mind is property colon value. Property colon value, they are all separated by commas, take a look at that. So the property is ID, the value is something, the property is first name, the value is Vladimir and so on. So this is how a simple JSON object looks like. Reading and understanding a simple JSON feed is no fun. Let's take a look at how we can read a complex one. This is from Graph API on Facebook and it simply shows my timeline post with a limit of 2 to return only 2 results up there. Scared? Don't be nervous. Let's take a look at how we can start. See this curly brace at the top? It means that we are starting an object. An object, as you know, is a collection of properties and values. So the first property that we have is data over here. The value starts with a square bracket. This means that we are having an array over here. Now within this array, it's obvious that it's going to have several little values over there. So the first value begins here with this curly bracket here. Now what we need to do first is to find out where this ends. And that's pretty simple inside the graph explorer. Just keep the mouse here and keep scrolling down to find a suitable closing tag that comes at the same position. So far we have not found anything but if you go down here, right here, there is our closing curly bracket at the same position where I was keeping my mouse indicating that the object ends here. There's a comma, there's a curly bracket beginning again and if you go down all the way, you will find out that the second object comes to an end over here and then there's the end of the array. So that's what you basically saw. There was a data array with two elements inside that. Now we will break down the elements further, don't worry about it. If we go further down, there's a comma here indicating that our first property has ended and our second property begins with the property and value syntax that you see here. Property here in this case is paging. The value is an object that begins with a curly brace and ends with one. It has two properties inside. There's previous which has this link. There's next which has this link. So that completes our upper navigation. Now let's take a look at how we can break down one object further. You see this data which is basically an array. It starts here at the square bracket and immediately you notice this curly brace opening here. It means that an object has started inside our array. Now this object is supposed to contain property value pairs that are separated by a comma. So there's id, there's the value, there's a comma. Again there's another property called from which has its value which is another object over here. Now this object as you can see has 
property value property value separated by comma in between and there comes your third property value here and then there's story tag which is your fourth one now this again starts a curly brace there must be an ending curly brace it's right over here now this simply means that this is an object here inside this object there are property values as usual there is zero here which begins with an array and ends over here now this array may contain zero or more elements or objects that you're interested in and this is the object that we are currently interested in which contains property values is id and the value and so on so this is how you can break down the json feed as you go further you can apply the same principle to all the items that you see within a json feed now of course when we parse the json in the upcoming videos you will notice exactly how to make this out and how to understand how to visualize this in a better way and all those things in the meantime if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.